I'm glad you made it this far. This is the final part six video for the Fur Elise tutorial by Beethoven. And we finished right here, which was the ending of part five, and that will lead us to the part six. us back into what you already know from part one and that's going to close out the song okay so so right here is where we ended and one thing I want to point out too upon further inspection of the sheet music uh, the left hand right here for this chord I played it with the D in the right hand like that and it sounds perfectly okay and that's okay to play it like that but in the sheet music actually the D doesn't play it's just the E and the B so this is where we left off and that's going to lead us and I'm going to show you the left hand first for this part because the left hand actually has the easiest part as we start this you're just going to play a single low A for the bass note okay so just that low A one time and then your left hand is going to quickly move up here and you're going to play this A C and E this A minor chord uh, and that's all you're going to play so it's like this It and you play it through three times and each time is the, you know, the double just like that so if just watch the left hand here okay you see how the left hand did that because the right hand started here actually on this a c and e but after the right hand plays this a c and e it's going to move up here and that's going to leave room for the left hand to come up just like that so that's all the left hand does it's pretty easy so let's take a look at the right hand and the good news is for the right hand here this sounds pretty cool uh, but it's not as difficult as it may sound because what the right hand is going to do you're going to play the a c and e those are the three notes consisting in this a minor chord and i use my thumb index finger and number four ring finger so one two and four and then after this A, C, and E, you're actually just going to come up an octave higher and play this A, C, and E as well. And I'm going to use the same fingers. And after that, then we just come down D, C, B, and actually all the way down to A. But when we get to A, that's actually when we restart this pattern. So we play. And when we get to A, we're going to start this pattern again just as if we were playing it right here. So we play A, C, E, A, C, E, and then down. And then we play A, C, E, jump up, A, C, E, down. A, C, E, jump up, A, C, E, and down. Okay, so that's the pattern. Okay, so let's do it again. And actually right here is where we're going to then, instead of going to this A, we're going to play down in this chromatic scale, simply playing a half step every note. And I'm going to show you the, uh, whoops, the technique that I use. And actually we're going to play it all the way down to this E, and then really the D sharp, but, and then back up. And then that's where we play the, the main riff of the song. So for this part, remember the left hand. All right, that's what the left hand does. Now just focus on the right hand for now and then we'll try and put both hands together. Okay, let me do that again. There we go, because after this B, that's where we're gonna go down, okay? So we're gonna play uh, this. Let's try it one more time. And then right here, um, I'm gonna cross over my index finger. And then I'm just gonna go back and forth between my index finger and my thumb. Okay, except right here, 
Um, I'm not going to do my index finger because then my thumb would have to go up and that's not good. I like to leave my thumb for the, the white notes or for the lower note. So I'd like to have another finger up here. Okay, and I'm not going to use my index finger because then, you know, my, then that would leave my thumb. So what I'm going to do is actually cross over my middle finger for the E and then do index finger, thumb, index finger, thumb. Same thing here. I'm going to do my middle finger crossover. Then I can go between my index finger and thumb. And then here. Okay, so when we get to this note, we just play this one time. And, you know, normally we do this. You know, we play it a couple of times before we do this. But when we play this in this chromatic scale, we just do that, you know, one time. Just like that, okay? So the uh, right hand again. Middle finger, middle finger, middle finger, and then one time, and then we're back. We're back into what we already know. So let's see how the left hand timing works out with the right hand here. Okay, so when the right hand, when the middle finger plays this D, that's the, the first time that this chord is going to play again. And then it's also going to play again when we get our thumb back to A. So on the D and then on the A. So let's do it in slow motion. Again, you see how that works out? And then right here, remember normally this is when the thumb would play that A, but we're playing that B flat. And so um, I know it's showing the sharps for you, but this B flat. And when that plays, that's when the left hand again plays this A, C, and E. It's really the same timing, the way that it works out. Let's try it all together in slow motion. See how that works out? And then the left hand doesn't play here until we get back uh, to this, okay? So we left off, let's try it again, uh, speeding it up a little bit. From the last section, we left off here. I'm gonna add in the sustain pedal just a little bit. back to this. You already know this. That was part one. Then we go to part two. Then part one again. And this is where we close the song. Right hand does the same thing. Now normally this is when the left hand would play A, E, and A. But what you're gonna do uh, from the sheet music, you just play these two low A's together. Just like that. And um, you know, I think it sounds better to, to add in this C. It's not in the sheet music, but I think it, it sounds better. This sounds kind of empty to me. It doesn't sound as, you know, grand you know, what a grand closing. But it, to me, this sounds better with the C. Also what you can do, hold it, and then play the really low A's. You can either slightly add in that low A, or just like that, really loud. And again, that's something that I, I just add in. That's not in the sheet music, but I think it sounds pretty cool. All right, so that concludes part six. I'm gonna go, uh, go ahead and review this for you one more time. Remember where we left off from part five. I'm gonna play close to normal tempo now.
right, so that finishes part six from Fur Elise by Beethoven. Now, I'm assuming you've already mastered parts one through five, and that's why you're here in part six. So really, part six is not that difficult. It's just the timing uh, with the uh, left and right hand. Okay, and just practice that right hand. And then all the way down. That little chromatic scale is probably going to be one of the harder things you'll have to work about or work on. Uh, and just remember the way that I cross my middle finger over those two times. So that's how to play for release. Give this some practice. I think you'll get this part in no time, and you'll be able to add it in with all of the other parts, and you'll be playing this song just like Beethoven did, like a genius. So thanks for watching. I hope this helped you out, and I hope to see you on more of my tutorials.